Hello and welcome to another episode of the Small Town Tourist Podcast where we experience and explore everything that makes small towns great. I'm your host, Abby, and today we are talking to someone who I have had on my radar for a few years now, actually. We're talking with Vicky from Vicky's Camp and Country Jam. This is a newer country music festival that happens in Redwood Falls, Minnesota. This will be the third year of it this year, and they have a stacked lineup. Jody Messina, Sawyer Brown, Cooper Allen, Easton Corbin, plus a bunch of incredible regional acts as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's a three-day festival. They label it as in the cornfield because it's literally surrounded by cornfields. Love it. So country music festival of them. (laughs) But it's just going to be a lot of fun. Vicky was a delight to talk to and we get into details on everything planned for this year in this interview. So I'm so excited for you to hear it. If you're looking to get tickets for Vicky's Camp and Country Jam, it's happening June 27th through 29th in 2024. And I have a link to get your tickets down in the show notes below so super easy access please enjoy our time hanging out with vicky and learning more about vicky's camping country jam okay so i'm gonna have you start by giving your name where you're from and what you do hi i'm vicky galstead friedrichs i am from redwood falls minnesota and i am currently the owner of vicky's camp and country jam I am so excited to have you on for this episode. This is kind of kicking off my summer festival spotlight series that I do. And I just thought that this would be the best opportunity because your event looks like it is going to be the event of the summer. I've seen a lot of lineups come out for country festivals. I think you got the best this year. Oh, thank you. We are super excited too. We can't wait. I know we were excited when we got Sawyer Brown and then all of a sudden we got Jody Messina and then... Easton Corbin and Cooper Allen as our main national acts. So we were super pumped about that. And then we've got the regional acts as well. So those guys are a lot of fun too. Yeah, you got great regional acts. Maiden Dixie, Foreplay, Hicktown Mafia, Church of Cash, Shane Martin, TNA Band. Like it's just a killer lineup across the board. Thank you. We think so too. So before we get into what's going on more this year, how did Vicky's Camp and Country Jam get started? Because you're a pretty new festival from what I understand. Yes, we are just starting our third year. Well, okay, it all started many, many moons ago when I was young and I went to WeFest. That's how it started. As I was attending WeFest, the very first one, and I absolutely fell in love with it. I fell in love with the live country music, being outside, just the entire festival atmosphere and the experience I had and I have been going there I still attend it I've been going there forever like haven't made every year there's 30 years or so but anyway so I just kept saying to myself someday is there any way I can have this back at the farm and the community that I grew up in here near Redwood Falls which is closer to Delhi but anyway I love the community and I thought can I bring something similar back there and have it smaller. And the reason I say smaller is because, and no knock against WeFest or any of the other larger festivals, they're all wonderful, but they are also large. And I wanted something that was a little bit smaller where people could just see the greatest sight line to the national stage without having to be so far away that you need jumbotrons. And not only that, just the lines, the lines to go to the food or to the beer gardens or to go to the porta potties. There's just always lines because there's, you know, so many people. So I thought if we can have it where it's a lot smaller, so we don't have all of that and we can make it a little bit more, I'll use the word intimate. So it can be just, you know, just a, a, a just a completely different experience than the larger festivals. So here we are. I mean, I was lucky enough to have the county board say yes to the permit when I first went to apply for it. And the first year was definitely a learning experience. I'm still learning, but we have overcome some of those challenges that you get when you first start out on a festival. So we're here, we're excited, we're we're plugging away. So that's how it all started. That's crazy. Yeah, WeFest is It's huge. So my first year there was 2016. It was like Eric Church and Kid Rock and Tim McGraw. And I bought these tickets to go with my friend, not really knowing what a festival really entailed. I was like fresh out of high school then. And I just wanted to go see Kid Rock. And (laughs) I I, uh, 
initially bought the tickets in like January and I'm like, okay, I should probably try to find like another festival to go to too, just so I kind of get the lay of the land because I heard We Fest was just massive. So my first festival experience was actually Moondance Jam and Country up in Walker. And I had just the best time. It was a smaller festival, short walk everywhere. It was so close and tight knit. And then I got to We Fest. I'm like, oh my God, this is huge. This is like a city. <laughs> what is going on? Yes. Yes. No, that's exactly it. And again, nothing against it because I'm still going there. I still love right. it. But this is just something, something different. Just a, And the people that have been here the last two years that have experienced both the large festival and this one. I mean, they're, they're just so complimentary. They're like, this is exactly what we want. We're kind of tired of the large festivals. So, and some of them go to both. So like, you know, me, I go to both, yeah. but that's what the whole purpose of this one was for. Yeah. It's just a little bit smaller. It gives you a little bit more sense of like a community almost. And yes. now that you're in your third year, I'm sure you're starting to see some of those repeat people coming back and just being excited for it year after year. Yes, definitely. No, we've got a lot of repeat and then they're telling their friends and that's the word of mouth has just been the best advertising for us. Yeah, for sure. So how do you go from saying, okay, I've been to WeFest. I like country festivals. I want to start my own. How do you start booking these bigger acts? The local ones are pretty easy to get a hold of and see if they're available. But like, how do you get to booking people like Sawyer Brown and Jody Messina? That's a great question. And I had no idea because again, I was just that type of person that, I mean, I was that attendee, I was the patron. And so I really had no clue. I ended up finding a few people that really helped me. They really mentored me and said, okay, this is how you do it. And one person in particular, he said, I will help you book the first bands. I will help you get to the nationals that you need to. And the first year, that's exactly what he did. And he really, really like basically said, this is how you do it. You know, he gave me all the ins and outs. And so the second year, which was last year, I booked him myself. And this year I booked him myself. And um, yeah, it's it's been fun. It's a, quite the learning experience. So uh, it's just a matter of I had the right people at the right time just guiding me. You know, the universe just provides sometimes when something like this needs to exist, especially in the community of Redwood Falls, a little bit smaller, a little bit off the beaten path. It's not in the cities. It's not in, you know, the bigger areas. It's great that you had those resources to help guide you and put you in the right direction to make your dream become a reality. Exactly. 100%. Yes, that's so true. So you tout your festival as being in the cornfield. Is it actually in a cornfield? <laughs> well, the campgrounds are basically in the field and it used to be a cornfield. We could not keep it a cornfield because you wouldn't want corn stalks in between your campers. So obviously we did plant, uh, you know, alfalfa and a pasture mix. So surrounding the property and the festival site, yes, it's, it's surrounded by the cornfields. And the first year we had, uh, I believe it was two of the national acts, I think maybe it would have been three of the national acts that literally they said, I can't believe you're surrounded by corn. You're like in the cornfield. They were, you're in the cornfield. I know, I know we are. So that's been kind of the fun little slogan to say, you know, we are surrounded by corn. So basically, yeah, we're in the cornfield. Which is how a country festival should be. If you're not in like our stones throw away from a cornfield, are you even at a country concert? <laughs> I love it. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. That's amazing. So let's kind of get into what's going on this year. So in addition to the great lineup of music you got going on, there's also some other things that happen throughout the campgrounds. You got kind of a fun activity list here. What kind of tell everyone about what you got going on? There's so much. Yeah, we we like to say we're more than just a country music festival. We've got you know fun activities uh, basically all day long until the music starts. So to start off the festival on Thursday night, Pheasants Forever hosts our bingo. And it's it's the Guns, Diamonds, or Cash bingo, which last year we filled the tent. It was, and it was a large tent. It was a 40 by 60 tent. So we had a lot of interest in that. And that's fun because literally you win, <laughs> you can win a gun or diamond or cash on that one. So we have a ton of interest on that. And then um, throughout the weekend, we have different contests and tournaments that again I say other festivals do not have this at all they might have a beanbag tournament which we have 
but they don't have the activities that we've got for four solid hours. So as an example, Friday and Saturday, from noon until four, it is solid with activities. You can choose to go play maybe in this putt-putt tourney or depending on what's on the schedule that, that day, or you can go bowling or, I mean, there's just simple games like rock, paper, scissors. But the fun thing with all these activities, every single activity has a $250 prize, whether it's cash or it's the value of the item that, that can be up to, I should say up to $250, but there's some that are $250 in cash. So it's fun because people are like, oh my gosh, I won that activity. That just, that just paid for my entire weekend there. Right. (laughs) Oh, that is so fun. Yeah. It gives the campers and even people just coming for the day, but it gives the campers something else to do where they don't have to just sit in the campgrounds all day and wait for the music to start. So it's just, it, we kind of, we grew into more and more activities and we had a lot of compliments last year and we said, even had people say, can you get more? And we're like, Whoa, you know, we've got quite a few now. So, but yeah, it's it, like I said, it's more than a country music festival because we do have all these activities to, to go with. Well, and it really feeds into like building that community as well, because when you don't have that kind of activity, like structured event happening, you're probably just going to stay with the core group of people you came with. You're probably going to hang out at your campsite. You might go walk around a little bit, but if you're playing rock, paper, scissors against someone, or you're doing the fishing casting or whatever it is, you're going to make new friends. You're going to meet new people. And then as you're going about the weekend, you can say hi to them and you make friends that way. And then next year, maybe you're both there again. And you're like, oh, hey remember us from last year like it's just so great that is so true because I did um I met up with a couple of people that had played in the big ball beer pong contest and they saw them like I don't even know it was like three hours away they saw them somewhere and they were like hey we remember you from that big ball beer pong contest and you know it's just like so then they hung out and had beers together I'm like hey that's oh. kind of cool so yeah you're right people they just meet meet more people and it's an opportunity to just come in and and in the inside the concert bowl and and do those activities that's so heartwarming it's just like the world gets smaller in a good way when that kind of stuff happens that's so true I love it. So I'm super excited to just follow this journey this year. I think this is going to be so much fun and I'm hoping your ticket sales are doing well. I hope they're going to just skyrocket once people hear more about it because you are a newer festival, but once the word gets out, man, this is just lightning in a bottle here. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you. Yeah. Sales are definitely up from last year, which is wonderful. And Again, the the toughest thing for me is to get our name out there because it's hard to do that unless you're uh, you have a bazillion dollars to advertise, you know. So yeah, word of mouth has really helped us. We've sold out Campground A, Campground B, and Campground C already, which is great, and we're about three quarters full in D, and E is maybe half full. So we're just so excited because. Last year, we only sold out A and B and part of C. So it's it's just, again, with people saying, my friends told me we have to go and we're coming and we're excited. So yeah, sales are definitely up. Oh, I just got goosebumps when you told me about that. Like, oh, just I'm so excited. The vibes are just so good. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, we're excited too. So if people want to get tickets for Vicky's Camp and Country Jam, give us the dates of this year's event and how they can get their tickets. Okay, so the dates are June 27th through the 29th. So that's Thursday when it starts. And then the 29th, um, obviously it goes Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And they can go online to vickyscampandcountryjam.com and then hit the buy tickets tab. And it pretty much walks you through. uh, You have to decide if you want to come for the day or if you want to come for the weekend. Then you decide if you want general admission tickets or if you want VIP and VIP is awesome because you get 24 uh, beverage drink tickets for the weekend. Yeah. You get um, a couple uh, food tickets. You get to sit in a reserved seat all weekend. Um, you're in the VIP lounge and the, of course the VIP porta potties are in that area. So really if you're VIP, you do not have to leave the VIP area the entire time, unless you want Um so that's the differences in the prices. Um, oh, oh, now you have to edit because I forgot what I was going to say. That's okay. <laughs> oh my um, gosh. The VIP yeah. package. That sounds 
incredible. Like, it sounds like you're treating VIPs like you're like close personal friends and family. Oh my gosh. People that go to VIP have so much fun. It's, it is just because you're, it is like a, its own little community inside the VIP area. It, it's really, a, it is a good experience. I'm so excited. So in addition to like everything happening this year, do you have like something in your head where you're like, even though I'm going to be crazy busy, you're trying to run this thing. Like what's the can't miss event for you during your festival? Oh, of course, I'm going to say the artists, you know, as far as the national artists and even the regional artists, because they put on such an amazing show. We've been so incredibly fortunate and blessed that our production team has been, I'm going to use the word flawless. They have done such a great job with sound and lights and the the actual artists have been so nice so easy to work with and so of course I'm going to say the music is always number one and then I want them just to come and experience the activities or even if they don't want to do the activities you can still meet and talk to people the campgrounds you know the campers they love to go around and talk to other campers and maybe share a beer or a story so I just I have to say everything they need to do everything (laughs) do it all do it all live life to the fullest (laughs) <laughs> yes, exactly. Just come and have a fun, relaxing weekend. Forget about all the stress. And, you know, my goal is that when people leave, they say, now I had a blast. I mean, that's what I want everybody to be able to say. I think you'd have to like purposely try not to have fun based on <laughs> everything that I've learned about it. It just sounds yeah. like an absolute blast. Nope, I agree. That's, I mean, just to, that's one thing when I do get some time and I can walk around and just observe during the festival and I see people laughing and, you know, smiling, just happy. It just makes me happy. Because again, that's, that was the whole goal of trying to get this festival here. I wanted them, I want people to experience what I got to experience so many years at WeFest, you know, just having a wonderful time. So hoping that's the, that's going to happen again this year. I highly believe that you will make that happen. <laughs> oh, thank you. Vicki, this has been just absolutely delightful. You guys should come. I think it would be a great time for you. Well, and I'm such a Jody Messina fan. I absolutely love her. So I used to be a radio DJ. So I would uh, get to go to all these festivals and I do all the stage announcements like at Moondance and Firefest. And one year, Jody Messina was at Firefest and Moondance in the same year. So I got to introduce her like twice within like a month. I'm like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. That is really great. Yeah, I'm excited to actually meet her myself. She sounds like she's just a wonderful person. Just like a ray of sunshine on a gloomy awesome. day. She is a beautiful human. Yeah, no, I've heard that. That's great. One thing I did want to bring up was we are having two appreciation days again this year. So on Friday night, we're having military vets, first responders and EMT appreciation day. So anybody that's in the military or a veteran or first responder EMT, they get $50 off their ticket. So if they're coming just for the day on Friday, the the ticket itself is then only $22. It's super cheap. So we're just trying to honor, honor them on that day. And then on Saturday, it's farmers and truckers appreciation day. And we've got quite a few of our sponsors that have donated some swag for the first 50 farmers and truckers that come into the gates on Saturday. So we're hoping that we can, you know, get to see and and meet a lot of the farmers and truckers that help us so much throughout the year. I should say forever. They're always, they're always helping us out. So I just wanted to bring that up as well. That is so nice that you guys are doing that because talk about like underrepresented people and underthanked people, veterans, truckers, and farmers. We need to send so much more love than we do to these people. And I love that you guys are shining a spotlight on them. Oh, I can't agree with you more. They just, like you said, they're under, they just don't get enough recognition. I I completely agree with you there. Literally, they make the world go round. And I I love that you guys are showing love to them. That's so sweet. Thank you. Nope. It's it's they deserve it. So great. Is there anything else we didn't really cover? Uh, We're still looking for volunteers. And if anybody wants to volunteer, we've got some awesome perks. They get free concert tickets. Um, Obviously, we'll give them a meal free, you know, water during their shift. If they work the whole weekend, they get a free campsite. It's just, it's just something fun with the volunteer team. They get to meet new people, just bring some more fun into their life and be part of our, our team. My team is amazing. My staff and my volunteers that we currently have, they're amazing. There's no way this festival would even be going or be where it's at if it wasn't for my awesome team. I can't say enough about 
Oh, I'm so blessed to have them. Another way the universe gave you the right people at the right time. Exactly. 100%. I agree on that. Yep. Oh, that's so great. This has been an absolute delight. I've been looking forward to it all day. I had a big old star on it next to my calendar. I'm like, yes, we're doing it. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. I appreciate you taking the time. You're the one that's trying to put on a festival. So <laughs> well, there's always time. There's always time for people like you. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. We'll get the word out. I love it. I appreciate it more than, you know, I just, it, that's the best thing. Anybody that can help get the word out is, it just makes it so much easier for me. So thank you. I'm here to scream it from the rooftops. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for checking out another episode of the Small Town Tourist Podcast. If you're looking for tickets for Vicky's Camp and Country Jam this year, we've got the link down in the show notes below. If you're looking for more content from the Small Town Tourist, you can always follow me at the Small Town Tourist on Instagram. You can check out the Small Town Tourist Facebook page and the blog, thesmalltowntourist.com. I'll catch you next week. 